Netflix's Resident Evil Season 1. <laughs> oh boy. This was a show that uh, didn't really need to happen. However, it was a semi-enjoyable original story with hints of Resident Evil in there to keep some fans happy, I guess. But uh, it ultimately just fizzles out towards the end and leaves much to be desired. Now bear with me because I still have a bit of a cold, as you can probably tell through my voice. But uh, when did this series get released again? Like uh, almost a week ago? Well, I didn't watch it until now, but I mean, even... When it got announced, I wasn't really that excited or anything, mostly because most things Resident Evil that aren't the games get received so poorly, and this one is no exception. The majority of votes say this series is really poor, though I did see some articles of people saying it was actually good. So a lot of mixed feedback, uh, mostly poor though, but still I had to see it for myself, you know, and I don't really regret my decision. But I also feel like I wasted a lot of my time as well for nothing. Ah, uh, look, I'm, I'm on the fence with this one. But man, why does every time like a Resident Evil live action adaptation gets released, it always gets received poorly? I mean, I'm not a huge Resident Evil nut, so I'm genuinely curious. The original Milyovovich movies were overall pretty subpar, even though I believe one or two of those movies were pretty good, actually. But the Welcome to Raccoon City movie that came out last year was an utter failure, I felt, and could have been way better. But I don't know, for me it just feels like the games are already really good, so why tarnish the Resident Evil name, you know? I guess that's why I felt uh, Re Welcome to Raccoon City was that underwhelming, you know? I, I feel like original stories might be their best bets, but hey, what do I know? But that's kind of what this new Netflix series is like. It is ultimately an original story set across two timelines. In 2022, before all hell breaks loose, we've got something that feels like a teen drama with a hint of horror that serves as some backstory. And then in 2036, which is, I guess, present tense in regards to the show, and in a post-apocalyptic landscape with zombies and the like, which is basically the end of the world. Now, even though it is an original story, it does have hints of Resident Evil in there, like certain Easter eggs and references, and it also has characters like Albert Wesker and someone else who I won't mention because they weren't shown in the season and might be in the second season. So I guess it does try to fit within the Resident Evil universe, but it does feel different, which is fine, I guess. Like, you need something fresh and kind of different, right? While still having some of the elements from the well-known games, like the monsters, gore, action, and puzzles, which this show does have sooner or later. From the get-go though, like around the first three episodes, I said to myself, I don't know how I feel about this. It was okay. And I guess I never once was like, oh, let's just switch it off. I know there are probably some people out there who just probably stopped watching almost immediately into it and just flat out hated it. For me though, it was good enough that I just kept watching because I was like curious about this whole world and uh, the characters as well. And I had a lot of questions. And that's the thing with the show, or at least this season, it's one big build-up process, and it goes back and forth between timelines, past and present, to keep things interesting. Or at least they thought it would be interesting. Now, I don't know how I feel about this. Yes, it does make things more interesting, but it kind of feels a bit disjointed as well. It's kind of like what I said I didn't like about Stranger Things. But in this case, it's worse because uh, sometimes I'm just trying to figure out what this all means and it's hard to make sense of it all when it's like constantly switching between the timelines. It just feels very messy, you know? I wish it would have been more chronological, but we can only imagine because it is debatable whether or not that would make this series better, and eventually I did get used to it. But still, it made it feel pretty hard to get invested into the story at first. At first, it didn't really interest me all that much, and the main reason why was because I kept wondering why I should care about these characters. Because it's almost as if the show doesn't want you to. It just kind of jumps you right into the story, and some of the backstory comes later, but a little bit too late. And that's when I started to actually kind of like the characters. 
The more I watched the show, the more I just didn't mind it anymore. I started liking some of the characters and just didn't really treat it like Resident Evil. And when I didn't really treat it like Resident Evil, I had a lot more fun just seeing the journey really because there wasn't really any expectations. But it wasn't until I was watching the fourth episode in the season where I actually started to enjoy it. The whole thing with Jade's backstory with Billy, her sister, was a nice emotional touch and some of the action sequences accompanied by the badass music was a joy to watch at certain times as well. There were some pretty hardcore and gory moments that made me go, god damn. And you know what, I've always asked Resident Evil live actions to have more unique monsters. I know that was one of my gripes with some of the past Resident Evil movies. And in this one, along with all the regulars, we have a giant bug, a giant spider, and a giant alligator. Even though there were a few, I was hoping there'd be more though, because for a big period after those episodes, there really wasn't anything. It was just story. And that's when the show kind of goes a bit downhill. If there was a graph that showed level of enjoyment from the season, it would go like this. Episode 4, for me, was easily the best episode. After that, there were like two episodes where we just focus on their specific timeline, like filler episodes. We, we just had a bunch of story episodes with hardly any action whatsoever, and it, it kind of reminded me back to what I didn't like from some of the past Resident Evil movies. It was just all story and no play almost, <laughs> and the pacing of this series is very questionable at times. And towards the end, I had one big question that didn't get answered, and that was what exactly happened between 2022 and 2036. Because there was a huge gap that I expected this season would at least answer, you know, but it couldn't even do that. Guess we'll find out in the next season. <laughs> So you know what, because of that and uh, some of the hints I got from the final episode of this season, I am kind of looking forward to season 2, if there is one. And I'm really hoping there is one, because if there isn't one, then that would make this show complete garbage. I would agree. Because it leaves out a lot of uh, unanswered questions and stuff that I need to know, you know? I think ultimately in terms of characters though, Lance Reddick definitely stole the show for me as Albert Wesker. If if he wasn't in this, then I don't I don't know. I probably wouldn't have really liked this show that much at all, or as much as I kind of do now, to be honest, because I mainly enjoyed the scenes with him in them. Turlo Convery as Baxter that evil Umbrella Guy also gets an honorable mention. I actually liked him, but I didn't like what uh, they did to them in this show though. I'm going to give Netflix's Resident Evil Season 1 a B- or C+. I can't really decide, but yeah, somewhere around there I guess. You know what, we'll just say a C+. Because there's a lot to like about this show, but there's also a lot to dislike about it too. So yeah, ultimately mixed feelings about it for me. Uh, there are some people who like it, you know, I've seen. There are also some people who just flat out hate it. <laughs> In fact, most people are like that. I'm kind of like, eh, in the middle, somewhere around there. <laughs> I did like the references to Kevin and also... Zuckerberg and Google as well. <laughs> oh man, this uh, show does have some jokes here now, uh, na here now. But I mean, most of that is like overshadowed by just bland storytelling, in a way. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna stop now. I already before I lose my voice, I feel even worse than when I recorded for the Gray Man. But anyway, guys. Thanks for watching, let me know what you think down below, like and sub if you enjoyed, and as always feel free to check out any of my previous videos. Until next time.